I love baseball. Baseball, baseball. 94.5 The Peak presents Wasatch Wasp Baseball on the Mid Utah Radio Sports Network. Hey! This broadcast is powered by Guild Mortgage, Dairy King, Garquette Auto Parts, Physical at the Fit Stop, Wasatch Back Flooring, Napa Wasatch Auto Parts, Heber City Point S, Doria Dental, and Bank of Utah. Baseball. The guy on first. Who? The first base. Who? The guy playing first. Who is on first? I'm asking you. Now let's go live to the diamond for play-by-play coverage of Wasatch Wasp Baseball on 94.5 The Peak. Good afternoon and welcome back to the ballpark. Tyler Baird here with Tyler Moss today from Wasatch High School where Wasatch will complete their two-game series against the Spanish Fort Dons. It was a fun one yesterday. Wasatch had a 2-0 lead going into the fifth inning and ultimately ended up losing 4-2 after giving up two in the bottom of the fifth and the sixth. Had their chances tied with bases loaded, nobody out in the top of the sixth and came away with no runs. They'll look to bounce back today and they'll turn to Bridger Shaw on the mound who had his best outing of the season on the mound the last time he was out there against Orem High. Yeah, Ty, Bridger showed a lot of resiliency in that last out. He was on the mound in extra innings, and it went five extra innings, Tyler. And over and over and over again, he was able to work out of tough jams. And so it's the kind of guy you love to see on the mound, Tyler, because he's got a lot of fight and a lot of resiliency in him. Hopefully he can just take a deep breath and relax. And and frankly, Tyler, see how his arm is coming back just a few days after throwing by far his most pitches over the course of the season in those five innings and extra innings against Orem. But you noted Wasatch had a fun one yesterday. Tyler, it'd be nice to get on the right side of the win column in these fun ones. They've had back-to-back really, really good games against Spanish and Orem, but unfortunately both of those got away from them late. They were leading by two runs in the fifth inning or later and lost both of those games. And so they need to find a way to close down games here and get those wins when they played well and have the lead late in those games. You're listening to the Dairy King pregame show. Winners of best in state for over 20 years. Since 1946, the Dairy King family has been serving your family for four generations to create a fun-filled atmosphere where quality food and family can come together. Ty, let's go ahead and jump over to some keys to the game. Bridger Shaw warming up as Wasatch is the home team. What are some keys today for Wasatch to come out on the right side, as you mentioned? Well, Ty, it's kind of going to be the an opposite type of pitcher today for Spanish Fork that Wasatch is going against. Lamson yesterday was Mr. Around the Zone. Going to be accurate, and it showed. He didn't walk many guys at all. They only had one walk late in that game when they had a relief pitcher in. So Lamson was around the zone. Who they're going with today is Scott, a senior, Tyler, who has 16 innings pitched on the season, but he's also got 16 walks to go with those 16 innings pitch. Giving up 24 hits on the year, a much more hittable uh, guy, and also a guy that will give you free passes on the bases, Tyler, with Spanish Fork. So if I'm Wasatch, this might be a little bit more try to work the count and and see if Scott won't give you a few free ones. It's not as automatic to get after that first good fastball you see today. And I'd like to see Wasatch be a little more patient on the mound. Scott's got over an 8 ERA, and so I'd make him prove that he can come after you, Tyler, if you're Wasatch in the box today. And I think that's going to be the right approach to get the win here today for Wasatch. Brought to you by Doria's Dental, who offers no surprises of dental treatment with Dr. Dorius and Dr. Proctor. Let Doria's Dental make your mouth smile. Learn more at DoriusDental.com. Opening pitch set to go. Brought to you by Bank of Utah, who has accounts for everyone from personal and business checking and savings accounts to mortgage and consumer loans. Visit them at their friendly Heber branch at 620 West 100 South. And together, we'll build relationships that last. Bank of Utah is an equal housing lender. Member FDIC. Opening pitch out of the windup from Bridger Shaw. In there for a strike to the freshman. Warren, who's playing center field again today. That's right, only a freshman hitting 438 on the year. Three doubles, six RBIs, was one for two yesterday. Second pitch is 1-1. This one's going to be elevated to left field in foul territory. Jacob Bradshaw goes over, makes the play, and Wasatch has one away. Haven't seen Bradshaw on left field really yet this year, Tyler, but that's a good example already of why it's an advantage to have a lefty in left field coming over to that ball that's tailing away on the left field line. It's an easier catch because he's left-handed, which means his glove hand side is there and just able to easily scoot underneath that ball. What could have been a tougher play for a right-handed player turns into a routine fly out there for Bradshaw. Slight breeze coming in from center field today. It'll be... Dart, the senior shortstop, who will be batting next. And then in the on-deck circle is another senior, the catcher, Nielsen. Dart, 340, five extra base hits, seven RBIs. Was 0 for 3 yesterday with a walk. Swings and fouls off the first pitch. Now this one's just outside, a 1-1 count. Shaw on the year, 13 innings pitched, a 7 ERA, 10 walks, 7 Ks. Those stats brought to you by the Gordon Law Group, your full-service local law firm, practicing in all areas of the law. They take pride in saying, yeah, we do that. 
That's a good off-speed pitch there from Bridger Tyler. 1-1 one, one count. I think Dart was looking for a fastball coming back. Shaw was able to freeze him with the breaker. Goes back to the breaker. Dart's able to get a piece of it. Fouls it off. Stays alive. Keeps the count at one ball and two strikes. And those pitchers are really good because he's hitting location very differently, Tyler. That was a breaking pitch off the outer half. Dart didn't want to risk it and leave it up to the umpire, not knowing the zone early. Had to get after it. And uh, fouled off a pretty good pitch there from Bridger. Fouls off one, a fastball this time, so keeps the count at one ball, two strikes. Bridger looking good early on around the zone. Take us around the diamond, Tyler, for our Heber Appliance defensive starting lineup. Bridger Shaw, the junior, will be starting on the mound for Wasatch, throwing to Garrett Christensen, who looks like he's starting to lock down that starting catching spot for Wasatch. Curveball's going to be elevated to shallow center field. Carter Bukad's going to go right behind second base, make the play. Wasatch has two up and two out. Yeah, Shaw continues to look good there on the mound, doesn't he, Ty? Coming out. Two up, two down for Wasatch to get this thing started. Going around the rest of the infield, freshman Braxton Fowler will be starting at third base. Senior Carter Bucat at shortstop. Grant Mahoney, the junior, will be at second base today. And senior Riker Evans playing first base. Your outfield, as you've already heard, Jacob Bradshaw, the senior, in left field. Center fielder will be senior Zach Burdett. And in right field today will be sophomore Crew Baxter. That's your starting defensive lineup for the Wasatch Wasps. When you're down to your final out and your fridge goes out, turn your drop the ball into a touch them all at Heber Appliance. Increase your at-home satisfaction with Heber Appliance furniture and mattress. Line drive's going to be right at play. Three up, three down. No run scored in the top of the first. Wasatch zero will bring up their first at bats after this. Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy Queen, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the Valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot, or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy Keen, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. Attention all sideliners. Economists and investors have said recently, if you are saving money and waiting to buy, I'd reconsider even at current interest rates. Reports have shown that the masses move or not move based on the behavior of interest rates. This is sidelining in our current environment. With most people using this information as their playbook, it leaves everyone doing the same thing at the same time, resulting in a basic but serious future crisis of supply and demand. So, come see me at Guild Mortgage and let's put you in the game. Thompson, NMLS 257849. Good Mortgage Company is an equal housing lender. NMLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Why would you wander around a warehouse store looking for paint when you could just swing by your neighborhood Ace? In addition to Ace's award-winning service, we have top-rated paint brands. Plus, our color matching technology allows us to match any color. So stop wandering and start painting. Head to your neighborhood Ace today. Timberline Ace Hardware, serving the Heber Valley for over 50 years, is conveniently located at 737 South Main Street in the heart of Heber City. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. First at bats for the Wasp brought to you by a good spa day, your favorite hometown place to relax and unwind. They offer massage, skin care, nail care, and unique relaxing spa packages. Pick a good spa day to be your spa. It'll be Bukad Sweat Evans to lead it off. Ty, take us down the rest of the batting order for the Wasps. Yeah, Ty, I want to go through just a few stats here with you. Bukad hitting 304 on the year. Tyler, after he had one hit yesterday, Sweat not getting a hit on the game yesterday. Saw his average drop from 340 down to 318 is where he's at coming into today. And Riker Evans, after having a good day, is all the way up to 326 on the batting average, Tyler. After him will be sophomore Crew Baxter, who again had a good day at the plate. He's up to 321 with his batting average. And then Grant Mahoney at 388, still leading the way for Wasatch. 
I let you call a couple. Yeah, a couple of strikes that are fouled off behind us. So an 0-2 count here to Bukad. A little bit ahead of Scott so far today. Braxton Fowler will be hitting in the sixth spot. Tyler had actually some really good swings yesterday that didn't fall in. He's hitting 111 on the season and limited opportunities. But his swing did look pretty good yesterday. So don't let that average fool you too much. It's going to be a tough call. Man, three that, that, that's Bukod. a tough strike call. That one was not given to Shaw at the top of the first. And Bukod goes down looking. First strike out of the game for either team. In the seventh spot for Wasatch will be Jacob Bradshaw, who's now hitting 286 on the year and limited opportunities. Garrett Christensen up to the eighth spot for Wasatch. He had an RBI hit yesterday. He's hitting 214 and rounding out the nine for Wasatch is Zach Burdett, who's playing center field. And Burdett is hitting 217 on the year. He's going to bring up Blake Sweat, as mentioned, 318. Was 0 for 3 yesterday with a walk. Has five RBIs on the year. Fouls off the first pitch on a check swing. 0-1 the count. Off speed. Gets the outside corner for strike two. As you mentioned. Sure, I talked about how he has control <laughs> issues. Tyler, and five, straight strikes. five straight strikes to start this one. Scott Setz working out of the stretch. Delivers the 0-2. Goes back to the off speed. And how about back-to-back -back Ks for the senior? As he gets Bukad and Sweat both looking, and Wasatch has two up, two retired. Ty, coming into this game, Scott had a whip of 2.5, which is terrible. It's not a good whip at all. So coming out and throwing six straight strikes and striking out the first two hitters, this is out of the norm here for Scott, but he looks good coming out the gate, Tyler. Throw the stats out the window. He's looking pretty sharp. Remember if Riker Evans was two for four yesterday, another check swing strike one. He's hitting 333, eight RBIs, second on the team in that category, and was two for four with a run scored yesterday. Was able to score a run in the top of the first in the same situation, two outs, nobody on. Check swing, foul ball again, and that'll move the count to no balls, two strikes. Well, Ty could have the... The uh, rare immaculate, immaculate inning. inning here, Tyler. If he can get the strikeout here, the minimum nine pitches and three strikeouts. We we did a trivia on this, Tyler. How many times did it happen in the history of baseball? Do you remember what that number was? Oh, I jinxed him. Miss, misses low, one, two in the major leagues, right? Major leagues, yeah. I can't remember. Was it, it, it was over 100. Oh, it was about 148, 148 times, 148. I think, was the number, Tyler. And repeated by the same pitcher, I think it was nine times. One, two, the count here to Evans, the pitch. Goes back to the off speed, fouled off to the Spanish Fork dugout. Keep the count at one ball, two strikes with Crew but Baxter on deck. Ty, any inning where you've got Riker Evans hitting, you're just not going to get that immaculate inning because Riker Evans is going to see five to seven pitches every time he comes up to hit, it seems like. Now going on pitch number five right now. Delivers, goes back to the fastball. Evans able to get a piece of it, fouls it behind us, and keeps the count at one, two. It's a stat we don't have on our advanced metrics, Tyler, but I'd love to have that stat of how many pitches hitters see because Riker Evans just abuses pitchers up there, making them throw so many balls to him before they're able to put him away or often he finds his way on base. Goes outside, misses, ties up the count at 2-2. Two, two. So this will again be the seventh pitch here for Evans after this full count delivery. He's able to get his first hit yesterday with a two strike count. The 2-2 two -two swung on, it's to the 5-6 hole. Miller fills it cleanly, throws it across the diamond in time. Both teams go out in order. No runs and no hits, no base runners. 0-0 zero -zero as we go into the second. Napa know how. Your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy-duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts, 105 North Main Street in Heber City, a proud sponsor of Wasatch Was Sports. Napa know how. Hi, this is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member, and a member of the Caring Community Coalition. Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work this time of day. Check in with your kids. Find out where your kids will be, who they'll be with, and what they will be doing. Brought to you by Wasatch Behavioral Health and the Caring Community Coalition. This is live coverage of Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Top of the second inning brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. 
your rehabilitation specialist dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. It'll be Scott Anderson Lamson to lead it off here in the top of the second. No score, no base runners in the first inning for either team. Shaw working out of the stretch. Gets a swing and a miss for strike one to Scott, who comes in 351. A couple, four doubles, a home run. Was one for three yesterday. Scored a run and had an RBI. Felt like his hit, though, yesterday, Tyler, was the game changer for Spanish. They were down 2-0, struggling to get any runs across the board. He got the big first RBI knock that made it 2-1, to one, kept the inning going, and Spanish was able to kind of get on that momentum and ride their way to the comeback. Fouls this one off as well, so that moves the count to no balls, two strikes. Goes too far outside and into the left-handed batter's box for a ball one. One, two, now the count. Shaw, the windup, delivers, goes back to the off speed, gets his first. Wasatch physical therapy strikeout. Ball pops out of Christensen's glove. A little bit of confusion. Finally gets it, throws it down to first base. First Wasatch physical therapy strikeout, and Wasatch has retired four straight. Yeah, Shaw's looking really good here, Tyler, to start this game. He's been efficient with it, too. Only 16 pitches to get the first four outs. Coming up now will be the third baseman senior, Anderson, second, or excuse me, first on the team with a 469 batting average, four doubles, seven RBIs, was two for three yesterday with an RBI. He'll swing at the first pitch. It's elevated to shallow right field. Tough play here for Wasatch. They're not going to get to it. It'll be foul, however, and we'll reset with no balls, one strike. Quick peek at the RPI standings tie. Maple Mountain has moved all the way up to number two. Springville, number four. Orem, number five. Salem Hills, number six. So four out of the top six teams all coming from Region 7. This Spanish 14 Wasatch is facing at number eight. Um, then going down Cedar Valley, number 16. Wasatch holding true there at number 21. And Timpview has dropped to number 23 in the RPI standings. No balls, one strike. Goes in on the hands. Fouls that one off. Moves count to no balls, two strikes. Viewmont, number one in the RPI standings right now, and then your other team that's in the top five is Brighton, who Wasatch saw earlier in the year as well. No balls, two strikes here to Anderson. The pitch, does he get the outside corner? No, he does not. Really good spot, Tyler. Bridger still trying to fill out the zone in the early going. That's a great pitch there brought, when you're up 0-2 to see if the umpire will give it to you. Yeah, brought, brought a little bit of reaction from Carter who got his shortstop. He felt like that one was similar to the one that he got rung up on. Goes back to the off speed, gets him to swing and a miss. It's in the dirt. Christensen will have to throw it down to first base. He throws it to Evans in time. Two outs, two strikeouts here in the top of the second for Bridger Shaw. Garrett's done a nice job, Tyler, to keep those Two strikeouts in front of him. Ball was close there. He was able to get up and throw a nice, easy ball down there to Riker Evans. That's uh, not necessarily as easy as it looks sometimes on those balls in the dirt. Garrett doing a good job with it. Going to bring up the left fielder, Lamson. He's going to swing at the first pitch. It's going to be elevated to the first baseman. Evans calls everybody off, makes the play. And we're perfect through two. Six batters up, six batters down. It's 0-0 as we go into the bottom of the second. Attention painters and homeowners. Premium Kelly Moore paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Kelly Moore Paints outlet. You can now get premium Kelly Moore paints at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Kelly Moore paints. Stop by today. Well, folks, spring is near, but have no fear. Country Gardens and Nursery is here for your everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener to our new bulk yard, where we offer large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. Four, three, two, one. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Bottom of the second inning between Wasatch High School and Spanish Fork High School here at Wasatch today as these two teams 
Face off for the second time this week. Second inning action brought to you by Gravity Coalition, who offers the best in bikes, skis, snowboards, skateboards, and more in the Heber Valley. They've got purse line service, sales, and repair for the gear you love. Gravity Coalition in Midway, Utah, or gravitycoalition.com. This is a cool shop. It'll be Baxter, Mahoney, Faller. Baxter two for three yesterday, hitting over 300 on the season, hitting in the cleanup spot number four. Mahoney as well, also two for three. Swasatch was good, three through five yesterday with all three hitters going two hits. Baxter in on the left-hand side of the batter's box facing Scott, who was able to get two Ks and a ground out in the first inning. And that was going to get Baxter. He'll take it off of the ankle, and Wasatch produces the first base runner of the ball game on the hit by pitch. Ty, he, he gets hit by a lot of pitches, and it's just kind of there's something in the water for some players that just seem to get hit by a lot of baseballs. And often they're not hitting him too squarely either, Ty. They're just kind of grazing off of him. I think there's something to his size and being left-handed up there. I think it's just big and intimidating to a lot of pitchers, and often they have a hard time controlling the ball. Mahoney lays the bun down a little bit too good. It'll go just foul, and we'll reset. No balls, one strike. If there's anything to watch, that's not having a lot of lefties in the lineup as well, Tyler. So you put a big lefty up on the left-hand side. Pitchers used to throwing to those right-handed batters, missing oftentimes into that left-handed batter's box. And that was similar to what we saw in the first inning when he would miss with the off-speed. He was right there at that spot. Now you got an ankle there. Yeah. Well, I promise you most pitchers notice when a bigger guy comes into the box. Tyler, when you step in and you're 6'2", 6'3", 6'4". Mahoney's going to go ahead and lay this one down to the first base side, and it's going to go over the first baseman's head. The pitcher tried to underhand it to the first baseman, and he airmailed it, and Baxter's able to go from first to third, and a great bunt from Mahoney produces, and Wasatch now has runners on first and third with nobody out. Ty, I, I think that highlights some things that we've been talking about, about just executing. Grant didn't try to do too much. Got the pitcher off the mound, and that's that's what you need to do. It doesn't have to be a perfect bunt right on the line. And when you have a bunt that's executed, you're putting the pressure on the defense to make a play. they got to field it clean and throw it clean. And often they'll give you some free ones like you just saw there. Strike one here to Braxton Faller. Only hitting 167 on the year. You mentioned Ty had a good barrel in his last at bat that nearly got the right center field gap, ultimately ended up resulting in a double play with Wasatch not tagging up on the ball into the outfield. That one inside, 1-1, one, one, the count. I think the umpire signaled high, not inside on that one. Looks like it might have been a little in. Faller playing third base, he's played third base, pitcher, second base, a little bit of shortstop and outfield. He's played all over the place for the Wasatch this season as a freshman. Off-speed pitch in there for a strike, and that'll move the count to one balls, two strikes with Jacob Bradshaw on deck. Infield is playing back up the middle for double play depth. Corners are playing in. Scott shakes. Faller asks for a timeout. And now he'll get back into the box. Ty, obviously you want a hit here from Braxton, but what's critical is that he's in play. It just He's got to be in play, preferably on the ground, but a sack fly would work as well. Swings at this one. Take a picture. Gets stuck up in the netting on the backstop. Keeps the count at one ball, two strikes. And to finish that thought, Tyler, it's just if he strikes out here, then your double play could end the inning. Now, it's going to be hard to double up Jacob Bradshaw, Tyler, uh, who's on deck there, but it is an option, and you'd hate to get a runner on third with nobody out and not find a way to get them in. This one is swung on and fouled just barely down the third base side. Nice protective swing there from Fowler, and he keeps the count alive at one ball, two strikes. Yeah, Ty, you mentioned it, and that's the thing that I think we've been most impressed with on Braxton as only a freshman. He seems to have a good feel and understanding for the game. Knows with two strikes he shouldn't be taking big swings, and that was a protective swing just to get the ball in play. Scott sets, delivers, misses outside, four ball, two. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Runners on the corners here in the bottom of the second. Score tied, 0-0. Zero, zero. Baller back into the box. Scott sets, delivers, goes back to the off speed. Faller elevates this one to the right field side. It will tail foul, and we'll reset at 2 2. Another good job there. Went back to that off speed. Off speed's been pretty good, tight. Froze a sweat on the second at bat of the game. Faller stayed with that one, fouls it off. Yeah, this is good at bat from Braxton Tyler. Spoiled a lot of pitches, leaving some close ones. Showing a lot of growth here as a young player. The 2-2. Two -two. 
Goes back to the off speed, elevates this one to left field. It's not too deep. Left fielder will settle underneath it, make the grab. And Coach Jacobson, with only one away, says, let's go ahead and keep you here and give Bradshaw the opportunity. So one away on the pop out to left field. Steel runners on first and third. Trying something that you'll sometimes see in that situation when you know that the ball is going to be caught is you'll see the first baseman sometime, or the guy on first tag on yeah. that, and just see if there's going to be a throw down to home and you can maybe swipe second base. Wasatch opted not to do that there. And give Bradshaw an opportunity. 286 batting average. Had a single on a drag bunt yesterday. That one's going to be inside for ball one. Wasatch able to produce two base runners on a hit by pitch and then an error on a sacrifice bunt. Yeah, Ty Jake's got two hits on the season and nine official at bats. But in uh, both those hits coming by way of bunt here, Tyler, but he does have some good pop if he can get something on the line. One ball, one strike, swings at this one foul down the first base side. One ball, one strike. Garrett Christensen on deck for Wasatch. Bradshaw, another lefty, steps into the box playing left field today for Wasatch. Already has a nice out in the top of the first. 1-1, one, one, that off speed misses high for ball two. Two on the count. Scott sets, delivers. That one misses high and inside. Keep, moves the count to three balls and one strike. Again, we talked about this in the pregame show a little bit, but want to just reiterate this a little if I can. Scott over eight on his ERA coming in. So this is not one of Spanish Fork's top dogs. He's one and one on the year in five appearances. And coming into the game, Tyler, he had 16 walks, no hit by pitch. So that hit by pitch for Baxter, actually the first one that he had on the year. Fills up the count on a check swing foul ball. So three balls, two strikes, one away with runners still on the corners. But he's given up 26 runs in only 16 innings pitched. And uh, several base on balls to go with that, Tyler. This is where he's struggled is just giving free passes. Three balls, two strikes. Pitch just misses outside. And the second free pass of the inning will load the bases. And it'll bring up Garrett Christensen, who was one for three yesterday. Uh, with an RBI hitting 207 on the year for the senior catcher. Zach Burdett back into the lineup today is on deck hitting in the ninth spot. Coach Jacobson takes a little time out to talk to his player and earns a trip to the mound as well from Nelson. Trip to the mound today brought to you by Mirror Lake Station, voted best donuts in Utah. Mirror Lake Station is your stop for gas, groceries, and goodies. And the owners, David and Kristen Wade, have grown to love their Chevron family and appreciate your support. These are one of those games where if, we, if you sense a little bit of tension or silence between me and Tights, because one of us has had a Mirror Lake Station donut <laughs> without offering I it to the other. maple with that white frosting that I love on top of it today, Tyler. It was, it was as good as ever. We get along pretty well, but there's a little bit of uh, tension whenever one of us has one of those. I had to get you back. Doesn't. Last time you enjoyed <laughs> the donut of the month and not even a thought, you know, to bring one over to me. One ball, no strikes to Christensen. A swing and a miss on the second pitch. Moves the count to 1-1. Bases are loaded. One out. Wasatch trying to take the lead. 0-0 here in the bottom of the second. Christensen back into the box on the right-hand side. Scott still working out of the stretch. High leg kick. Delivers. That one's in there for strike two. One ball, two strikes. Scott shakes and likes the pitch it's given. Corners playing in. Double play depth up the middle. The pitch goes back to the fastball. It's going to be back at... Third base, the bases are loaded, and it's going to be a double play, and Wasatch is out of the inning. I think Wasatch should hold here, Tyler, because he tagged Crew, and then he came back and tagged him again, but Grant had already gotten to third. I don't think I that think should be touched, a double play. I think he touched third, didn't he? Did he touch I third? Think he I, third I, I base. missed that if he did. Excuse me. Well, that's a, that's a tough way to end that inning, Tyler. Wasatch again gets runner on third with nobody out and can't push them across. No runs on no hits, one air in the inning, and Wasatch leaves three on base. It's 0-0 going into the third. I'm Walker Kessler, and I play basketball for a living. 
So I know how important it is to have the support of a team you can trust. That's why I love UCCU. UCCU is more than a credit union. They're a true financial partner. A local team of experts your entire family can trust at every step of your financial journey. Just visit UCCU.com and elevate your banking experience. Big O Tires in Heber is your one-stop shop for tires and service. What was once Point S is now Big O Tires. Same service, but different name. We're locally owned and operated and want to help you get your vehicle ready to road trip this summer. Stop in for all your name brand tires, oil changes, alignments, brakes, batteries, shocks, struts, and a whole lot more. Plus, Big O Tires offers financing options to fit any budget or any situation. Visit us today. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Hey there, Heber City. Are you tired of dings, dents, and scrapes ruining the beauty of your beloved vehicle? Look no further than Robarge Collision, the ultimate destination for all your auto body needs. At Robarge Collision, they've been offering top-notch collision repairs and outstanding customer service. Their team of expert technicians is passionate about bringing your car back to its original glory, no matter the size of damage. Their state-of-the-art facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, ensuring precise and accurate repairs. They handle it all with precision and care. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Top of the second. First pitch is going to be swung on. It's a ground ball to the shortstop. Carter McCobb throws it across the diamond. Reich Evans picks it off the dirt for the first out of the inning on the 6-3 put out. Top of the third brought to you by Physical at the pit stop. Do you sometimes feel dizzy or unstable? If so, physical at the pit stop has good news. Falls are preventable. Give them a call at 435-654-5607 for a free fall risk assessment. Let's see how you can improve your balance and regain your freedom. Shipman now up. That bat first batter was the D.H. Nielsen. Now Shipman and Duvall, the 8-9 batters here for the Dons. That one misses high for ball one. Top of the third, no score. Wasatch lost a good opportunity there in the bottom of the second with a runner on third, nobody out. That one's in there on the outside corner for strike one. 1-1 one, one to count. Shipman, 278, two extra base hits. Was 0 for 2 yesterday with a walk and did score a run in the ball game. 1-1 one, one to count. That one in there for a strike as well. And that'll move count to one ball, two strikes. Shaw gets the pitch, delivers the one ball, two strike. It's going to be a little looper down the first base side. Evans can't come up with it. Foul ball, and we'll reset it. One ball, two strikes. Good effort by Riker, Tyler. Got a pretty good first step on that ball. A low soft line drive. Probably about 20 feet inside the foul line there. Extending as far as he could. Just couldn't quite come in with it. Colton Bassett into the game in right field. First substitution of the ball game. That one's going to miss low for ball two. Two balls, two strikes. The 2-2 two -two misses as well, low and outside, and that'll move the count to full. Three balls, two strikes. The Spanish Fork still looking for their first base runner after having their first seven batters retired. The payoff pitch. Swung on, a hard ground ball to the second baseman. Mahoney can't come up with it on the backhand. And Spanish Ford does have their first base runner of the ball game. Well, Ty, I'm looking over. I got Bridger Shaw's dad next to me next to Grant Mahoney's dad. <laughs> and so do we give the air and, and make the Shaw's happy, or do we give a hit and make the Mahoney's happy? I'm not sure what to do over here right now. I'm going to let you give, make the call. <laughs> I'm sure people can hear, you know, you know Mr. Shaw over there, Tyler. <laughs> This one's going to be swung on. It's going to be a fly ball to the outfield. Colton Bassett just into the game in right field. Comes up, makes the grab, and Wasatch has two away. I still haven't written down whether that last I, one I put it down as an error. As an error. Yeah, as an error there. Error by the second baseman. I think that and ball's about, you know, 15 feet inside that second base bag. Probably one you'd like to see your second baseman come up with. He's going to bring up the leadoff guy. Warren flew out to left field. Was one for two yesterday with a sacrifice bunt. Comes up with... Two outs. This one's going to go off of Shaw's glove, and that one's an infield single. A hard line drive right back to the pitcher. Bridger got a hand on it. 
but it bounces away from everybody else, and Spanish Ford now has their first hit of the ball game, and runners on first and second. Yeah, swing and aggressive, right? The Dons are, Tyler, getting after a lot of those first and second pitches. Still only 31 pitches on the day for Bridger. Two and two-thirds innings into this one. So runners on first and second. First real threat of the ball game for Spanish Fork. It comes with two outs, and that brings up the shortstop. Dart popped out of the shortstop in his first at bat. Is hitting over 300 on the year and has seven RBIs. Couple of looks, Shaw working out of the stretch. Pops this one up and it's gonna get foul into the bullpen for strike one. No balls, one strike. Bridger continuing to pound the zone. Doing a good job on the mound. Soccer field gets into the ballpark. Austin Naughton gets it. Just announced that he is committed to wrestle at Western Wyoming Community College next year, along with a lot of other former Wasatch wrestlers. Austin's a big enough fella that when he picked up that soccer ball on the field, it looked like a tennis ball when he was throwing that thing out, Ty. No balls, one strike. That one misses low, and that moves the count to 1-1. One, one. Wrestling at the uh, heavyweight classification there in college, I would assume. Be a lot of work for him to go uh, down to a different weight. One ball, two strikes, runners on first and second. A long look at second, takes a second look. Delivers, off speed, or excuse me, goes upstairs, swing and a miss for strike two. One, two, the count with two away. Dart back into the box on the right-hand side. Shaw gets the pitch, comes set, delivers. That one's an off speed that's taken the opposite way, and that one will go foul. Keeps the count at one ball, two strikes. Two hitter up here for Spanish Fork, Tyler. Bridger up one, two. You don't want to mess around. Like to get this out. To want multiple base runners on when your three hitters coming up. Two long looks, now takes a third look. Delivers the one, two, runner's gonna go. This one's gonna be elevated again. Out of play, so keeps about at one ball, two strikes. Boy, that was an interesting move from the runners there, Tyler, and it was called by the coach. The first base runner went as well. Not a good jump from that runner. Bridger did a good job to mix up the timing and kind of a interesting spot to send your runner with probably your best hitter up. I think they must have just been assuming a breaking pitch that may be in the dirt there, Tyler. One ball, two strikes, two away. Shaw takes a look. This time it's going to be a pickoff move, not in time, and we'll keep the count here at 1 2, and everybody's safe on the base pass. You, uh, and I guess just to finish that thought, Tyler, you just don't want to run yourself out of an inning with uh, two outs and your two, three, four hitters coming up. Runner goes again, another foul ball, keeps the count at one, two. And they just keep going. I, I may be tempted to do, a little, pitch do a little pitch out on this one, Tyler, if they're gonna keep trying to run. It's tough to do a pitch out on the throw to third, but if that guy at second base is getting such a bad break, he might be tempted to throw behind that leadoff runner and try to get the runner at second base. Christensen had a couple of thrown outs against Orem. One, two, the count, two way, still runners on first and second. Shaw takes an extra look. Delivers on a slide step this time. It's going to be a ground ball to the 5-6 hole. Mukad fills it cleanly. He's not going to have it in time. An infield single from Dart, and the bases are loaded. It's a really good pitch from Bridger, Tyler. That ball is not well hit at all. It's just hit into the right spot. A really slow roller to Carter Bukad. What made that play more difficult, Ty, is Bukad was trying to keep that runner close at second base, so he was playing in the hole up the middle. Had to go all the way back to the backhand side. Did the best he could. Dart, with good speed, is able to get at first base before the throw. Pitch is low and outside here to Nelson. Leads the team with 22 RBIs and has a good opportunity here with the bases loaded two away. Shaw goes back to working out of the windup. The 1-0, off-speed pitch, gets swung over, four strike one, one ball, one strike. Speaking of Wasp on campus, Ty Jack Blutes having himself a good year at Salt Lake Community College. 347 batting average, one double, two triples, 13 RBIs. 
has also swiped four bags. It's going to be a ground ball to the third baseman. Faller fills it, steps on the bag, and Wasad gets out of the inning on the third base put out. No runs on two hits, one error, and three are left on base. It's 0-0 going into the bottom of the third. Chad here from Mountain West Trailers. Celebrating 20 years in business, we know you value strength and reliability. Whether it's for work or play, our dump and equipment trailers are built to last. Enclosed cargo trailers for business and fun, or open utility trailers for everything in between. With expert sales, parts, and service, we've got you covered. Mountain West Trailers is always right behind you. Visit us at mountainwesttrailer.com or stop by at 1470 South Highway 40 here in Heber. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. And now, back to the action. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Tied at zero heading into the bottom of the third inning. Brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. Your rehabilitation specialist dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. And also today's sponsor of our strikeouts, Bridger Shaw, the starting pitcher for Wasatch, already with two strikeouts on the game. Again, brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. Burnett's going to lay down a bunt to get the inning started. Close, but goes foul. And so no balls, one strike. It's 9-1-2 up for Wasatch. Senior Burnett, Senior Bukad, and then Junior Blake Sweat. Still 0-0. Both teams had bases loaded with an opportunity to score a run. Neither team able to do so keeping the score at 0-0. More Wasp on campus. Updates tie Chet Wilson. 247 batting average. Also has two doubles and a triple. 21 RBIs and has five stolen bases on the year for the Bruins. Off-speed pitch is fouled by Burdett. No balls, two strikes. Got action in the bullpen here for Wasatch. Tyler Riker Evans getting loose. Both of these guys threw on Monday to Orem. Misses high for ball one, one, two. Now the count. Yeah, Riker went six innings pitched, 89 pitches on the day. The one, two. Swung on, and that'll be the first single of the day for Wasatch. That ball's roped to left field by Burdett. And Wasatch has the leadoff guy on base. A really good swing from Zach there, Tyler. That was a mistake that hung over the middle part of the plate. Zach did a good job to hang in there on it and not try to do too much. Served up a nice line drive to left field. The Salt Lake Community softball team tie is number six in the nation. And a large part of that is due to another Wasp on campus, Kendall Purdy, who's committed to play at Utah Valley University next year. We'll give you an update on her season. Riker, or excuse me, Bukad up into the box. Does not square. That one's inside for ball one. 1-0 one -oh the count. Blake Sweat on deck. Kendall, 418 on the year. Six doubles, three triples, and 17 RBIs, and 26 stolen bases. Runner's going to go. It's a hit and run. This one's going to be hammered. Is it going to go foul? Does go foul. So 1-1 one, one the count on the hit and run attempt from Wasatch. Pretty good jump there from Burdett. Was Probably has a chance to swipe that bag there. Yeah, Ty, and I was kind of thinking through when Zach, or excuse me, Carter did not square on that first pitch. You start thinking, well, why? Maybe it's a hunch. Just feel like Carter's going to be able to swing it. But he's one of your better hit and run guys. And with Zach having speed over there, he's going to draw the attention of the second baseman. The 1-1. One, one. Now Burdett's going to go ahead and square. It's a nice bun down the third base side. Third baseman Miller comes up, makes the play as the runner advances to second base on the sacrifice bunt by Carter Bukad. Yeah, nice job from Bukad, Tyler. Just a reliable player for Wasatch. Can handle the bat and do whatever you need him to do. He's got pop. 
He can hit for an extra base hit if you need to, but really he's an up-the-middle, single-type guy. You can hit and run with him, or he'll execute and lay a bunt down for you. Now Wasatch 2-3-4 coming up with a chance to drive in the first run of the ball game. It'll be Blake Sweat struck out looking in his first at bat. Burdett with the duck on the pond. Now another squared bunt. That one misses low as Blake pulls back the bunt. One ball, no strikes. Shortstop really shallow here, Tyler. Playing nearly on the cutoff with one out. Now he's gonna back up a little bit. One ball, no strikes. Sweat does square. That one misses high. So that'll move the count to 2-0. -oh. It's interesting watching this defense move, Tyler. As the shortstop backed up, the second baseman took several steps over to cover first base. They're expecting Blake's gonna really lay down a bunt here. 2-0. -oh. I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Jacobson lets him swing away. The 2-0, goes inside, misses inside, moves the count to 3-0. More was on campus, Cole Zimmerman up at Lane Community College, 267 batting average, five doubles, 13 RBIs for the Titans. 3-0 the count, the stretch, the pitch, that one's in there for a strike at the belt, moves the count to 3-1. Also Jackson Bollander got his first start of the season recently. Has six appearances, 15 and two-thirds innings pitched, and a 1.72 ERA. Misses low and outside, and that'll be walk number three on the day for Scott. And Wasatch has runners on first and second with one away. A 1.15 whip, 11 Ks in those 15 and two-thirds innings. For Bullender, right? For Bullender, yeah. Yeah, that's, Utah, a, that's a kid that's going to be around the zone all the time. Utah University commit. Riker Evans is going to come up, elevates this one to left field. Too far, the left fielder comes up, makes the play. That's Lampson, the starting pitcher from yesterday, makes a nice play, and the barrel does not result. And Wasatch now has two away with uh, Colton Bassett coming up to pitch. That's a great yeah. swing, though, Tyler. That's one of those swings that you shake your head because it's deserving of an RBI single. After Burdett gets the lace line drive and then Riker has that, you, you're really, the baseball karma says you should have a run on the board. But an underrated part of that play is Zach Burdett. Good ball to Reed there at second base. Didn't run himself into a double play. When what, it could have been an easy double play there, Tyler, with the left fielder coming in on that ball. Had Burdett gotten off second base too far, Wasatch could have again ran themselves out of the inning. Swing and a miss here to Bassett. He's getting... His first at bat of the series into the game for Col Crew Baxter in right field. 0 1 the count. Pitch. It's an off speed pitch. And how about that? He's going to single this one to left field, but Jacobson's going to try to score Burdett. Burdett comes in and he will get the score, and Wasatch takes the 1 0 lead on the RBI two out single from the senior Colton Bassett. Well, you might have asked yourself, why did Coach make. That substitution for Baxter coming out. You know, Baxter had the base running blunder and Bassett coming up in that spot. Tyler, Baxter's been one of your better hitters, and you think, well, is, is this going to work out for Coach? It does. That substitution pays off in a big way. Bassett delivering for Wasatch, and now they're on the board, 1-0. Still threatening. Got runners on first and second. Good speed from Blake Sweat at second base with Mahoney up. Takes one inside for ball one. Spanish is going to have a timeout here on the field, Tyler. Coach is going to come talk about that. I think it's because Wasatch didn't declare Bassett as a sub, but uh, you don't have to. That's more of a courtesy. You have to declare it to the umpire, which Wasatch did. And Spanish is saying, hey, nobody told us about that sub when Bassett just got that hit. So I think that was more a timeout just to make sure they get their book corrected. Chandler stocking tie up at College of Idaho, 243 batting average. Three extra base hits on the year and also has 13 RBIs. So four Wasatch, excuse me, five Wasatch former baseball players really getting some good time. So this one swung on and fouled off, moves the count to one ball, one strike. Again, runners on first and second. Colton Bassett coming through with the big two out single that scored Burdett. Wasatch still with a chance with the duck on the pond. Blake Sweat takes a decent lead at second base. 
or in the second baseman trying to keep him close. Scott takes a peek, now delivers. That one misses low and outside. Sweat will stay at second base with now a two balls, one strike count. Braxton Fowler on deck. Mahoney reached on an error by the pitcher in his first at bat, had a sacrifice bunt opportunity, and the pitcher threw it over the first baseman's head. That one misses outside, moves the count to three balls, one strike. I'd love to see Grant be aggressive here, Tyler. This is a, a fastball count. Sure, he'll have that approach as well, and if he gets a fastball he can handle, put a big swing on it. Three balls, one strike, the pitch. It is a fastball, it's gonna be swung on, a ground ball to dart at second base, flips it to the second baseman. And Grant is retired on the Fielder's Choice ground out. But Wasatch scores one run on two hits, no errors, and two are left on base. Wasatch leads 1-0 going into the fourth. Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy King, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the Valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot, or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy King, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. Attention all sideliners. Economists and investors have said recently, if you are saving money and waiting to buy, I'd reconsider even at current interest rates. Reports have shown that the masses move or not move based on the behavior of interest rates. This is sidelining in our current environment. With most people using this information as their playbook, it leaves everyone doing the same thing at the same time, resulting in a basic but serious future crisis of supply and demand. So come see me at Guild Mortgage and let's put you in the game. Thompson, NMLS 257849. Good mortgage company is an equal housing lender. NMLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Our locally owned Ace stores are committed to helping our neighbors and our communities. And because we're in the neighborhood, we can deliver almost anything you need. So shop in store or online for whatever your home or yard needs. Choose from top brands like Milwaukee, Steel, Traeger, and Benjamin Moore. Then pick up in store, curbside, or we'll deliver your order right to your home around the block what you need in stock with people who know how to help see acehardware.com for details five four three two one ktmp heber city and live sports coverage with tie and tie top of the fourth brought to you by gravity coalition offering the best in bikes skis snowboards skateboards and more in the heber valley personalized service sales and repair for the gear you love gravity coalition in midway utah or gravitycoalition.com. This is a cool shop. It's going to be four, five, six up for the Don. Scott, Anderson, and Lampson trying to respond as Wasatch scores one here in the bottom of the third. Bridger Shaw filling up the zone right now, Tyler. 74% strike rate right now into the fourth inning here. One ball, one strike here to the pitcher, Scott. This is going to be a ground ball foul to the third base side. One ball, two strikes. Scott trying to help himself out. Did yesterday, was one for three with a run scored and an RBI. Maybe the biggest hit, hit of the ball game as you mentioned earlier. Nobody out here in the top of the fourth. Bridger Shaw on the mound, throwing so far to Jim. The one, two. Gets the outside corner for his third strikeout of the ball game. Again, brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy. Wasatch has one away. It's a two seam fastball that Bridger threw there, Tyler. Had that one start off the plate, just about a baseball width and it cut back in late. Froze Scott, never had a chance. Too irresistible to the umpire not to call that one, watching it come back in. Brings up the third baseman, Anderson. Low and outside strike called. That moves down to no balls, one strikes. Anderson leads the team with a 469 batting average, also is two for four in the series. The 0-1, this one swung on, elevated into the infield. Bridger Shaw, I believe, calling everybody out at the pitcher and makes the play. Wasatch has two away. Bring up yesterday's starting pitcher, Lampson, playing left field. Made a nice play yesterday, to, or the last inning, to save a run. In his first at bat, he popped out to the first baseman. It's 0 for 3 now in the series. Ty, that last ball that Bridger went and caught, it's nice to have an athlete on the mound to go get that, isn't it? Bridger. A middle infielder can play the corner as well for Wasatch. 
This one elevated, puts Bradshaw back to left field, scooting over and makes the play about five feet short of the warning track. And that's the third one, two, three inning for Wasatch in the ball game. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. They still lead 1-0. Big O Tires in Heber is your one-stop shop for tires and service. What was once Point S is now Big O Tires. Same service, but different name. We're locally owned and operated and want to help you get your vehicle ready to road trip this summer. Stop in for all your name brand tires, oil changes, alignments, brakes, batteries, shocks, struts, and a whole lot more. Plus, Big O Tires offers financing options to fit any budget or any situation. Visit us today. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Napa Know How. Your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy-duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts, 105 North Main Street in Heber City, a proud sponsor of Wasatch Was Sports. Coverage of Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Bottom of the fourth inning at Wasatch High School where Wasatch leads 1-0 over the Spanish Fork Dons. This inning brought to you by Heber Appliance Furniture and Mattress. When you're down to your final out and your fridge goes out, turn your drop the ball into a touch them all at Heber Appliance. Increase your at-home satisfaction with Heber Appliance Furniture and Mattress today. New pitching change on the mound as the lefty Sammy Dart comes onto the mound. This is his first appearance, Ty, as I'm looking over the max prep stats. Do not see him on the stat sheet. Spanish no, Fork having to go you deep into their bullpen here against Wasatch. Take a look Wasatch. at the roster. This is a freshman uh, that they like, Tyler. They're excited about him, Sammy Dart. Fresh hand, freshman, excuse me, left-handed pitcher, first baseman, and outfield. So that Dart name just continues to keep producing. Saw Zach Dart several years ago, went on to BYU to, to commit to play baseball. I think he's at Slick now, Tyler. Will Dart, the starting shortstop, feels like he's been here forever because he started for four years, Tyler. He's a senior, and now Sammy Dart, a new Dart name that you're seeing. It'll be Fowler, Bradshaw, Christensen, 6'7", 8", up for Wasatch. Fowler popped out to the left fielder in his last at bat. First pitch here, swung on and fouled down the right side for strike one. Pitching change brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Stop on into Mirror Lake Station for gas, groceries, and goodies, and those best-in-state donuts. The 0-1 also in there for a strike. A little bit more velocity here out of dart and throwing from the left-hand side. No balls, two strikes. It's a couple freshmen going against each other. Pretty sure these guys have seen each other several times before, Tyler, with Fowler being a freshman and Dart being a freshman. But you've seen two really good freshman arms on this Spanish Fork team, Tyler. This, this Don team looks like it's down a little bit talent-wise for where they were, but looking at these freshmen they've got on the mound, they're not going to be down for long. Well, strikeout looking. That's the third strikeout looking in the ball game today. Wasatch does lead 1-0 here in the bottom of the fourth. One away. That brings up Jacob Bradshaw. He walked in his last at bat. He's now one for three in the series. Did score a run yesterday. Has five runs scored on the season. Garrett Christensen in the on-deck circle. Fastball swung, fouled off. That's two balls that have now been stuck up in the backstop. It's just... I yeah, haven't seen just, any all year to this point. Just money sitting up there. <laughs> that eats at you more than most things. You know, when you have to had to buy those baseballs when you were the head coach, six bucks a pop, right? Uh, Is that what they were? That's what it was four or five years ago. Inflation probably has right. those things eight or nine dollars at this point. No balls, two strikes on a swing and a miss on strike two. Goes to the off speed. He gets a piece of it. It's elevated to the left center field gap. Warren will go over, covers the ground, makes the play, and there's two away. up Christensen grounded out to the third baseman he's now one for four in the series with an RBI Dart looking good in his first appearance on the varsity level gets a swing and a miss on a pitch a little bit high and outside yeah tight strike one Spanish too it has been a staple since we've been around for two decades of Wasatch baseball that 
they just don't bring freshmen up. That's, that's just not something they do. They keep their freshman teams down. And it was a big deal in Spanish Fork when Will Dart, their starting shortstop, was brought up as a freshman because of that reason. You, you just don't bring freshmen up. But with a new coaching staff and new philosophy, you're already seeing freshman arms making a big difference here for them. Morley. And, that show, and the center fielder, Tyler, also yeah. a freshman who's getting the start and batting leadoff. So you've seen three freshmen contribute already for the Dons and just kind of a, a new era for Spanish Fork with their new coach. Another swing and a miss, so a 1-2-3 inning there for the Dons and two strikeouts. Keeps the score at 1-0 as we go into the fifth. Hi, this is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member and a member of the Caring Community Coalition. Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work this time of day. Check in with your kids. Find out where your kids will be, who they'll be with, and what they will be doing. Brought to you by Wasatch Behavioral Health and the Caring Community Coalition. Attention painters and homeowners. Premium Kelly Moore Paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Kelly Moore Paints outlet. You can now get premium Kelly Moore Paints at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Kelly Moore Paints. Stop by today. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. Top of the fifth brought to you by Physical at the Fit Stop. Do you sometimes feel dizzy or unstable? If so, Physical at the Fit Stop has good news. Falls are preventable. Give them a call at 435-654-5607 for a free fall risk assessment. Let's see how you can improve your balance and regain your freedom. 789 up for the Dons, Nilsson, Shipman, and Duvall. Bridger Shaw still on the mound with a 1-0 lead. It was in the fifth that Wasatch gave up their first runs yesterday. Shaw out of the windup, delivers, gets the outside corner for strike one. Nelson on the right-hand side. Christensen sets up on the outside part of the plate, hits the spot, another strike, maybe a little bit, probably a ball or two outside, but he yeah, hit the I'd glove go, exactly. No I'd balls, go another ball outside, Tyler, and see if he can get him to chase. No balls, two strikes. Goes back outside, too far outside that time, and that'll move count to one ball, two strikes. It was a good idea, Tyler. He went outside to that same spot, but the breaking pitch pulled it away farther. But it looked like he just pulled it down a little too far, Tyler, so it started outside. Never really had the chance to get Nelson to go after it. Foul ball on the 1-2, keeps it at 1-2. Leadoff batter here in the top of the fifth inning with Wasatch leading 1-0. The 1-2, this one's elevated to shallow right field. And Mahoney will call everybody off, make the play as the second baseman. Wasatch has one away. Yeah, have a little meeting over there while you're at it too, Tyler. Four Wasatch players all had a chance to go catch that one. Bassett waiting, Burdett waiting, Bucod waiting. Mahoney had the best angle. It's good for him to go call that off and go get it, but that had plenty of time for everyone to go get it. Brings up the first baseman, Shipman, reached on an air in his last at bat. It's now 0 for 3 in the series, did walk and score in game one. Squares to bunt, brings Baller up, but that was playing a little bit deep. That'll be ball one as the ball pitch goes high. 1 0 the count. Shaw back into the windup, goes with the off speed, gets him to elevate this one, this time to shallow center field. Burdett calls everybody off this time, makes the play, two away. Spanish Forks, an aggressive swinging team, Tyler. Four and two thirds innings pitch for Shaw. Only 54 pitches on the board right now for Bridger. And he's just inviting them. I, I talked about Tyler last inning. His ball to strike ratio was about 74%. He's now up over 80% on his ball to strike ratio right now. Duvall comes up, popped out to the right fielder. His last at bat, now one for three in the series. Takes ball one. He's going to square, fouls it off for strike one. Tried to sneak a little drag bunt there with, again, Fowler playing a little bit beyond the bag. Brings Fowler up, creates a little bit bigger hole there in the 5-6 spot. 1-1 one, one the count, two-way, the pitch. Goes back to the off-speed, freezes him for strike two. One ball, two strikes. 
Top of the fifth. Bridger into the windup. Likes the pitch. Delivers. Gets him a low ground ball to Faller. Faller has to get rid of it quick. Is it in time? It's in time. What a play by the freshman Faller on the 5-3 putout. And Wasatch retires the side for the third time this, or for the fourth time this game. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. It's still 1-0. Or we'll keep it here for the Guild Mortgage fifth inning stretch. Tom Stone at Guild Mortgage has loan options to fit every situation from down payment assistance programs for first time home buyers to government sponsored programs for military families and rural residents or jumbo loans and high cost markets. Guild Mortgage has it all. Ty, take us through the inning by inning recap by, brought to you by the Gordon Law Group. Ty, this has been a pitcher's duel here. One run on the board for Wasatch, no runs for Spanish Fork. Both teams only have two hits on the day. And uh, it's, it's really been a pitch do, pitcher's duel, excuse me, right from the beginning. Bridger Shaw got to start off well for Wasatch, getting the Dons out one, two, three in order. But then Wasatch went down one, two, three in order in the bottom of the first. Spanish Fork came up in the second. And again, Shaw retires the side in order, that time with two strikeouts. Wasatch got a little something going in the bottom of the second inning as they got their first three players, or excuse me, first two players on base. Either they had first and third with nobody out. And then a fly out, a walk, and a double play ended that inning without any runs coming across the board for Wasatch. And into the third we went. Spanish Fork was able to threaten in the third inning. They had an error that got on base and two singles, but they were also stranded with the bases loaded on a fielder's choice ground out. Wasatch then got things going. Tyler in the bottom of the fourth as they were able to get a run on the board on a Colton Bassett RBI single that scored Zach Burdett, who had singled earlier in the game. So Wasatch got their two hits at the right time, and that's how they took a 1-0 lead over Spanish Fork. And at that point, Bridger Shaw has just been humming, Tyler. It's been five innings pitched for Shaw, less than 60 innings pitched, or excuse me, 60 pitches on the board. And uh, he's got Wasatch leading 1-0. Zach Burdett's going to lead it off here in the top bottom of the fifth swings at the first pitch a nice line drive to right field but the right fielder comes up and makes the play for the first out of the inning one away we're now at the top of the order to Carter Bucad and Blake Sweat ball one here that Gordon Law Group is your full service local law firm practicing in all areas of the law they take pride in saying yeah we do that 2-0 now the count here Carter Bricard, give us a chance, Ty, to throw it over to you for our key to the lead right now for Wasatch. Well, Ty, it's hitting with two outs and, and stringing together your hits at the same time. Wasatch yesterday had nine hits on the game and only scored two runs, Tyler. They just couldn't string together the right hits at the right time. Today, Wasatch with only two hits, but they came at the right time together, and that's what has made the difference on the board. Also executing, Tyler, being able to lay down um, you know, some bunts and, and move the runners, taking chances, and and uh, getting good two-out jumps, Tyler, on that single from Bassett. They've done some good little things to execute, but really the key's just been getting the hits in back-to-back -back sequences. It's a 2-2 two -two count as Bukad fouls off a couple. That one misses high and outside. Fills up the count at three balls, two strikes. Dorius Dental offers no surprises of dental treatment with Dr. Dorius and Dr. Proctor. Let Dorius Dental make your mouth smile. Learn more at DoriusDental.com. This pitch is swung on and sky high to left field. Lamson comes up, makes the play. Wasatch has two away. Ty, you think this kid's going to have some suitors? Sammy Dart on the mound here. Left-handed pitcher. Got pretty good stuff. Yeah, he said Probably in the break. College is drooling over yeah. him, I would imagine. We said in the break that he hasn't pitched this year. It'd be nice to have an arm like that that you haven't thrown yet this year. Blake Sweat comes up, walked, and struck out in his two at-bats. He's 0 for 4 in the series. Does have a couple of walks. That pitch misses for ball one. 1-0 the count, pitch, that one swung on, and that's a single to the right field side, Blake Sweat, and it's going to get by the right fielder. Blake Sweat's going to try to get for second base, doesn't bounce too far away from the right fielder. The throw in time, sure and gets him, Blake tight. Sweat right on the shoulder, maybe on the shoulder. Blake Sweat's not arguing too much, and Wasatch is out of the inning on the single. No runs on one hit, no errors, nobody left on base, and it's still 1-0 as we take our breath and move into the sixth. Well, folks, spring is near, but have no fear. Country Gardens and Nursery is here for your everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener to our new bulk yard, where we offer large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. 
We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. I'm Walker Kessler, and I play basketball for a living. So I know how important it is to have the support of a team you can trust. That's why I love UCCU. UCCU is more than a credit union. They're a true financial partner. A local team of experts your entire family can trust at every step of your financial journey. Just visit uccu.com and elevate your banking experience. And now, back to the action. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Bank of Utah has accounts for everyone from personal and business checking and savings accounts to mortgage and consumer loans. Visit our friendly Heber branch at 620 West 100 South and together we'll build relationships that last. Bank of Utah is an equal housing lender, member FDIC, also our sponsor of our standout performers. And Ty, who's some nominees for our standout performers today? Well, Ty, how about Colton Bassett in, uh, in relief coming in, subbing in the middle of this game, getting the RBI single to put Wasatch up 1-0. Zach Burdett's also had a nice game, Tyler. Several putouts there in center field. He, of course, has scored the only run in the game and has uh, hit on the day as well a single for Wasatch. It'll be the top of the order up for the Dons. One, two, three, Warren Dart Nielsen. Warren's going to square and foul that one off. Pretty good pitch there that's called a ball. So ball one and strike one. One, one the count. Two for four in the series with a run scored, reached on a single right back up the middle in his last at bat. That one misses low and outside for ball two. Two balls, one strike. Good Spa Day is your favorite hometown place to relax and unwind. They offer massage, skin care, nail care, and unique relaxing spa packages. Pick a Good Spa Day to be your spa. This is a good bunt, and Fowler does a great nice job, job of letting that thing go foul. 2-2 two, two, the count. It's a real heady play, Tyler. I, again, I, I know I keep hampering on it, but a freshman out there, he just understands the game. That's a ball, you're crashing hard, it looks like it's gonna stay fair, but he recognizes the only chance Wasatch has on that ball is if it goes foul. So he decides to let it go by him as it had a little spin, took it foul, and now you got two strikes. Benefit a little bit of playing on that turf. Ty, you don't know what that's gonna do on the dirt. Ty, mentioned a good spa day. They're our sponsor of our standout play of the game. What are a couple of nominees here early on? The 2-2, two -two, this one's gonna be roped through the 5-6 hole. Three hits in the series now for the freshman Warren, and Spanish Fork has the leadoff guy on. Say some standout plays. Yeah, standout plays in the ballgame today. Well, Tyler, the overall standout to me is just how efficient Bridger Shaw has been on the mound. We're into the sixth inning, and that pitch is only his 63rd pitch here on this one, Tyler. So I know that's not just one play here, but it's just kind of the collective effort from Bridger Shaw, that's really been the uh, the play to me. There's also been some big moments. Braxton Fowler, of course, with the bases loaded. Spanish Fork had a ground out to Fowler. Fowler did a good job coming up and making the play and stepping on his bag to end the inning. That's probably the biggest play of the game and it really the only threat that Spanish Fork has had at this point in the ball game. Leadoff guy on, Dart's gonna square for the first pitch. It goes outside for ball one. 1-0 one the count, good speed at first base. The pitch swung on, this one's roped to right for center field, but Burdett is gonna come up and make the play. It carries too far, one away. Want to give a shout out to Paige Armendaris at Utah Valley University, 380 batting average on the year. Also has 13 doubles, a home run, and 14 RBIs is also pitching as well for Utah Valley University. One out, runner on first for the number three hitter, Nilsen. 22 RBIs, runner's gonna go, that ball's in the dirt. Christensen didn't have a chance, and a stolen base puts a runner in scoring position. Nilsen's still looking for his first hit in the series. He's 0 for 6 with a couple of strikeouts. Still looking for, of course, his first hit and first RBI. Warren now on second base. Excuse me, Spanish has only had base runners in the second and, excuse me, the third and sixth inning. Couple of looks from Shaw. Delivers the 1-0, misses outside with the off speed. 1-1, now the count. Bridger says, I need a new ball. Tyler threw two balls in a row and that just hasn't been happening today. It must be the ball's fault. Give you some numbers here. 48 strikes on the day to only 19 balls for Bridger. He's just been 
incredibly effective on the mound. 2-0, that one misses high and in. 3-0, now the count. First batter that I've seen where he's really starting to look tired in the arm, Tyler. Control seems to be leaving him a little bit. Let's see if he can refocus in. 3-0 the count with the right-handed batter in the box. Nelson lined out to the shortstop and grounded out to the third baseman. The 3-0 lets that one go for strike one. 3-1, now the count. Last shot out for the Wasson on campus tie. Presley Christensen, a 2.36 ERA, 13 and three on the year. 100 strikeouts down at Colorado Mesa as their number one pitcher. The three run, runner's gonna go on the three one. This one swung on and fouled into the bullpen. Fills up the count at three two. They're not being shy about trying to take third base today, Tyler. They put runner in motion every time they get over there to second base so far. Sometimes in some some interesting spots. A clear hitter's count there, 3-1. And putting him in motion can get you into a potential double play there. Full count. Pickoff move, not in time. Probably not his best one. Not his best. Back at it with the full count. Shaw getting the pitch from Christensen. Now comes set. The payoff. Goes with yes. the off speed and freezes him for strike three. He goes with the curveball in a full count and it freezes Nelson. And Wasatch now has two away. Yeah, I don't know what Nelson was looking at there, Tyler. Ty, I was curious if this was going to be Dart coming up the freshman pitcher. Instead, this is Scott who will stay in his spots. So they must have him listed as a pitcher DH. Or did they I think put Scott Dart put in him for in second base. Okay. Sure, Scott went to second base. That's where he played yesterday. I, I forgot to look at that. It's going to be Scott trying to help himself out. That pitch must have been high for ball one. 1-0 one the count. Scott did have an RBI yesterday. He was one for three, scored and had an RBI. He's got two strikeouts today. Struck out swinging his first at bat, struck out looking in his second. Shaw looks, delivers. Go, frees him on the off speed, in there for a strike. One ball, one strike, now to Scott. I may end up eating these words here, Tyler, but Scott was a bit of a pole hitter yesterday. He got that RBI single going to the left side, and, and I'm not sure I wouldn't have Bukad step over a step or two to cover that 5-6 hole. The 1-1, Warren thinks about going, and this one swung on. Once again, he's ahead of it, and that fouls it off. One ball, two strikes here to Scott. Just to me, looks like he's got a bit more of a pull swing. Where you can maybe shift your center fielder over a bit and your right fielder over a little bit. One ball, two strikes. Warren at second base. One look, two looks from Shaw. Runner's going to go. Swung on and missed. It doesn't matter. Wasatch gets out of the inning on back-to-back -back strikeouts to the 3-4 hitter. Five strikeouts on the day now for Bridger Shaw. And Wasatch takes the 1-0 lead into the bottom of the sixth. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. Hey there, Heber City. Are you tired of dings, dents, and scrapes ruining the beauty of your beloved vehicle? Look no further than Robarge Collision, the ultimate destination for all your auto body needs. At Robarge Collision, they've been offering top-notch collision repairs and outstanding customer service. Their team of expert technicians is passionate about bringing your car back to its original glory, no matter the size of damage. Their state-of-the-art facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, ensuring precise and accurate repairs. They handle it all with precision and care. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Five strikeouts in the game for Bridger Shaw. Brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. Your rehabilitation specialist dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. It'll be Riker Evans. Uh, Colton Bassett and Grant Mahoney, 3-4-5 up for Wasatch. A couple of celebrity sightings. Crew Erickson in the house today. 
circling down at SUU, talking to his father, Chad. Had their spring game last week. He's currently listed as the number four receiver as a sophomore. I'm surprised you can recognize him, Tyler. He's gotten so big down there in the weight room. Right. Ask him if he can even swing a bat anymore <laughs> or if he's just used to bruising people out there on the football field. No balls, two strikes here to Evans after a called strike. The 0-2, does he get the corner? Doesn't get the corner. One ball, two strikes. It's pretty amazing how big these college football programs get these kids, right? They're already big when they're in, in high school, and then they put them down there in the weight room and bulk them up significantly. Misses high, moves count to two balls and two strikes. Bassett has the lone RBI. He's on deck, singled the left field with two outs. The 2-2 swung on and missed by Evans. That's strikeout number three for Dart. And that'll be one away here in the bottom of the sixth. Bassett comes up, came up with two outs and runners on first and second. Single to left field that brought in Burdett. And that's the difference in the ball game so far today. 1-0 the score. And Mahoney waiting in the on-deck circle. Swung on, good barrel, but it's going to go foul to the right side. No balls, one strike. The 0-1, swung on and missed. No balls, two strikes now to Bassett. The 0-2, hard hit ground ball to the shortstop. Dart throws it across the diamond. 6-3 put out, two away. Ty, this is the kind of game that a non-baseball purist will look at the scoreboard and say, oh, baseball is so boring. But this has been such a fun game here. It's been clean. Pitchers have thrown strikes. The fielders have played good defense behind them. This is exactly how you hope to see a baseball game. Just good job all the way around from both teams. Brings up Grant Mahoney, reached on an air, and then filled it or grounded out in a fielder's choice ground out of the shortstop. Fouls that one off for strike one. Dart still working out of the windup. Throwing from the left side. Misses high, 1-1 one, one, now the count. Wasatch trying to extend the inning, give a little bit of run support. The 1-1, one, one, misses outside, 2-1. This game brought to you in part by Gravity Coalition offering the best in bike, ski, snowboard, skateboards, and more in the Heber Valley. Visit them at gravitycoalition.com or at their store in Midway, Utah. Swing and a miss, 2-2 the count with two away. Nobody on base for Wasatch. Mahoney into the box, Dart delivers the 2-2. Swung on, fouled off, there's another $10 that are sitting up into the backstop. <laughs> 30 bucks sitting up there if anybody wants to climb up there and grab them. Mahoney fouls it off, keeps the count at 2-2. Who's a Wasatch player that you can put an autograph on that time that will make it worth more? Who's the number one Wasatch player you got to put an autograph on a baseball from? The 2-2 gets a piece of it, stays alive, and keeps the count at 2-2. Got the catcher, and he's going to go out and talk it over. Uh, it's got to be Clint baseball Kelson, right? player. Clint, Clint Kelson or Ryan Chadwick. Chadwick had some had some records, right, at Utah Valley. Are you saying just baseball? Yeah, so, so here's how good. This is going to be a funny way to describe it, but if you Google Ryan Chadwick, you're going to get a whole spreadsheet that pops up in the Google search for him about all his appearances and the all-time win leader at UVU when he played down there. That's a, that's a good choice sure. to get him to autograph one. I'm pretty Didn't sure. Didn't get drafted like uh, Clint Kelson did, though. Pretty sure Clint Kelson also may have punched out either Craig Counsel or Brett Boom. I think that's <laughs> a pretty good claim to fame, too. Another foul. No, this is going to be a ground ball to the third baseman. Tough play. Dart actually is going to come over, makes the play from the pitcher, but it's not in time, and Grant Mahoney gets a single, and Wasatch has a runner on base with two outs. You know, we talked at the break earlier, Tyler, about how Grant – got robbed on that sacrifice bunt that was an error and kind of went against his average, right? And said, you know, baseball rewards you. You get a hit back, and that's a good example right there, right? That, that ball, not great contact, but it's competitive, and he's in play, hustling down the line, gets a single on a ball that wasn't squared up that well. 
but just found space. This ball squared up well, and it's going to get to the left center field gap. Lamson's able to cut it off and keep it to a single, but Braxton Faller singles to the left center field side, and Wasatch has back-to-back -back singles, now has a runner in scoring position. Good job from Braxton Tyler again. I'm sure he's seen Dart here a few times playing his same age growing up. And so for some of the other Wasatch players, that maybe it's a little more of a mystery to what he has. Braxton, even though he's a little less experienced on the varsity level, probably your most experienced guy on the field for Wasatch going against Dart. And he wastes no time getting a good barrel on him. I, that's good for Braxton too, Tyler, because I felt like he's been so close with some of his swings. His batting average is down at 111 coming into this one. Just feel like that's one of those batting averages that is lying to you a little bit, where he's, he's been putting on better swings than what that average is indicating. Nice to see some balls start to fall in for him. Karen Stocking's going to come into the game to pinch run for Graham Mahoney. Wasatch trying to steal a run here in the bottom of the sixth. First two batters were retired, but then an infield single by Mahoney and a single to left field by Braxton Fowler. And Wasatch now has runners on first and second with two outs. Brings up Bradshaw, 0 for 1 today with a walk. Nice off-speed pitch there in there for a strike. 0-1 the count. Bradshaw now 1 for 4 in the series, but did score a run in game 1. Dart working out of the stretch, takes a look. Not a big lead from Stocking. Bradshaw is going to be the one that calls timeout. No balls, one strike to the senior lefty. Single on a drag bunt in game one. Stocking gets a good secondary. That ball's swung on and fouled off. Two strikes. I'll well, see what, what Sammy Dart's put out pitch is here. This is the time 0-2. Go to your best pitch and try to get a strike out here to end the inning. No balls, Thought I saw a pretty good slider from him, Tyler, in warm-ups. No balls, two strikes. The pitch swung on. It's going to be a lazy ground ball to the second baseman. Fields it clean, flips it over to the shortstop, and the Fielder's Choice ground out gets him out of the inning. No runs on two hits, no wears, and two are left on base. Wasatch three outs away, having the 1-0 lead going into the seventh. Chad here from Mountain Wash Trailers. Celebrating 20 years in business, we know you value strength and reliability. Whether it's for work or play, our dump and equipment trailers are built to last. Enclosed cargo trailers for business and fun, or open utility trailers for everything in between. With expert sales, parts, and service, we've got you covered. Mountain Wash Trailers is always right behind you. Visit us at mountainwashtrailer.com or stop by at 1470 South Highway 40 here in Heber. Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy Queen, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the Valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot, or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy Queen, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Top of the seventh inning, Wasatch with the chance to get the win against Spanish Fork, leading 1-0. Seventh inning action brought to you by Heber Appliance Furniture and Mattress. When you're down to your final out and your fridge goes out, turn your drop the ball into a touch them all at Heber Appliance. Increase your at-home satisfaction with Heber Appliance Furniture and Mattress. It'll be Anderson, Lamson, Nielsen, 5-6-7 up for Spanish Fork, trying to extend this ball game. They need to score one to tie, two to take the lead here in the top of the seventh. Bridger Shaw has gone the complete game, giving up three hits in the process. That one's in there for strike one to the third baseman. 0 for 2 today, 4-4-5 four, four, in the, or excuse me, 2 for 5 in the series. Hitting over 400 on the year. The 0-1, off-speed pitch, oh, off the plate for ball one. One ball, one strike. I'm going to say I disagree with that one, Tyler. I thought that was a pretty good pitch. Just a little curve ball that misses outside. 1-1 one, one the count. Mahoney comes back into the game. Nice play from Riker Evans. The ball swung on, a line drive, and Riker Evans makes the play. And Wasatch has one away here in the top of the seventh. 
Riker doing a good job to snag that ball in. Just Mr. Reliable on first, but also doing everything he can to snag that ball without having to actually jump off the turf. Tyler, that's not much of a jump there on that ball. Tiptoe to pirouette into it, stretch the glove as far as he could, and those first base gloves are pretty enormous, Tyler. Needed every bit of that to bring that ball in. Lamson's going to turn on the first pitch. Foul, but a good barrel down the left field side. Look to be on time. Burdett takes a couple of steps over to the left. All so does Burdett. Goes outside, misses for ball one. One ball, one strike. Lamson, 0 for 4 in the series. Did have a hit by pitch in game one. Popped out to first base and flew out to left field. He swings at this one. That one's foul as well. One ball, two strikes to the left fielder. This is the third straight game that Wasatch has brought a lead into the late stages of the game, leading against Orem and Spanish Fork in the last two and the fifth. Lamson does a good piece of hitting there, elevates it to the right field side. Bassett will knock it down, but it's a one-out single, and the tying run is now on first base for the Dons. Yeah, that's okay, and that's a good job from Colton over there, Tyler, to get around it and keep that ball in front. You do everything you can to keep that to a single. Wasatch playing a little more deep. No doubles, not trying to make it easy for Spanish Fork. And if you do that defensive strategy, Tyler, you need three hits to tie the game back up. And the numbers just say that's hard to do when you're down to two outs. Mahoney comes back into the game. He was pinch ran for. He is into the game at second base. The off-speed pitch misses up for ball one. It's going to be the designated hitter, Nelson, grounded out to the shortstop and popped out to the second baseman. He's one for five in the series, but did score a run in game one. Hitting on the right-hand side, Bridger working out of the stretch. This one's going to be roped to left field as well. Back-to-back -back singles for the Dons, and the tying run now moves to second base with one away. Brings up the first baseman, Shipman. Air by the second baseman. He was able to reach in his first at bat and then popped out to center field in his second at bat. Speed up runner, excuse me, a pinch runner is going to come into the game for Nielsen. It's going to be number two. Take a look at my roster here. Nate Peterson comes into the game, represents the leading run there for the Dons. Was or excuse me, Spanish Fork just needs one to force Wasatch to come up here in the bottom of the seventh. Riker Evans playing shallow as is Braxton Fowler. Double play depth up the middle for the Wasps. Bridger sets, delivers, misses high, ball one. Bradshaw playing deep out in left field and kind of playing close to that line. Burdett playing normal and Bassett playing shallow in right. Swing and a miss on the one ball, no strike count, moves count to 1-1. One, one. Such has dropped nine straight going back into the preseason. Really looking for a win in their first region victory after starting 0-5. The 1-1 one, one misses outside for ball two. 2-1 two, the count. You really couldn't have drawn it up any better for Wasatch this inning to get this win, Tyler. And you had five, six, seven coming up. You get number five out. And so with nobody on and needing two outs, you've got six, seven, eight, nine. Can you get two outs in that stretch to get the win? Two balls, one strike. The slide step delivery. It's a ground ball to the shortstop. This is a tough play. Bukaz going to field it cleanly. Throws it across the diamond in time at first base. Nice play from Carter Bukaz. The only play he had was to go to first. Gets the out. So now two away with the number nine hitter up. Runners on second and third. DeBall, the right fielder, only a sophomore, 0 for 2 today with a pop out and a ground out, 1 for 4 in the series, but did have an RBI yesterday for the Dons. And that's going to bring Coach Jacobson out of the dugout for his first trip to the mound, which once again brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Has a good job from Coach here, Tyler. I think this time out you're just going to go talk through every scenario. Remind your infielders. Hey, you need to back up every pitch. Um, we we got to be ready for you know some some kind of funky action on the bases. Catcher, we got to make sure we're keeping everything in front of us. Infield, if there does happen to be a ball in play, you have to put the ball on your body and keep it in the infield. Otherwise, you've got the go-ahead run that's coming across. Just little conversations like that that are likely happening out there on the mound right now. The huddle ends, and we're back at it. 
Wasatch down to their final out. They were able to score one run, brought to you by Physical Thera Wasatch Physical, excuse me, Physical at the fifth stop. And that's been the difference so far, trying to hold on to that one run lead. Physical at the pit stop, you sometimes feel dizzy or unstable. If so, physical at the pit stop has good news. Falls are preventable. Give them a call at 435-654-5607. That's 435-654-5607. The ball into the box. Shaw working out of the windup. That one goes high and inside for ball one. One over the count, Shaw back at it, working out of the windup. Good leads from both runners at second and third. The pitch, that one misses. Christensen has to smother it, does a great job of keeping it in front of him. Moves the count to 2-0. Shaw is now gonna go out of the stretch, trying to keep the runners a little bit closer. The 2-0, misses outside for ball three. Three balls, no strikes, with the leadoff hitter, the freshman Warren on deck. Again, Bradshaw playing way deep out in left field. Burdett normal in, right, in center. Bassett playing shallow in right. The 3-0, that one's in there for a strike. Moves count to 3-1. Bridger back in to the stretch. Gets the pitch he likes, comes set. Delivers the 3-1, misses. That's gonna be ball four, and the bases are now loaded. And brings up the leadoff hitter, Warren. Who's got two of the five hits today? Singled up the middle and singled through the five-six hole. Did fly out to left field in his first at bat. He's now three, four, five in the series. What could be the Gordon Law Group stat of the game? That's the first walk for Bridger Shaw in the game today. Yeah, he's creeping up to his pitch count limit now. 93 pitches on the game. Coach Jacobson giving this one to him. He's done all the heavy lifting, letting him try to close this one out. This is high for ball one here to Warren. 1-0 the count. A 438 batting average for the freshman. Shaw sets, delivers, goes with the off speed, gets the outside corner for strike one. One ball, one strike. Big time pitch there from Bridger Shaw. Went to the off speed and was able to get the outside corner. The 1-1. One, one. Goes with the fastball, it's right back up the middle. Bukad fills it cleanly, can he get to the bag? He touches the bag in time on the dive, and Wasatch gets the victory on the ground out diving play from Carter Bukad, and Wasatch wins 1-0. Stick around for the Timberland East Hardware Post Game Show coming up. Attention all sideliners. Economists and investors have said recently, if you are saving money and waiting to buy, I'd reconsider even at current interest rates. Reports have shown that the masses move or not move based on the behavior of interest rates. This is sidelining in our current environment. With most people using this information as their playbook, it leaves everyone doing the same thing at the same time, resulting in a basic but serious future crisis of supply and demand. So, come see me at Guild Mortgage and let's put you in the game. Thompson, NMLS 257849. Good mortgage company is an equal housing lender. NMLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Why would you wander around a warehouse store looking for paint when you could just swing by your neighborhood Ace? In addition to Ace's award-winning service, we have top-rated paint brands. Plus, our color matching technology allows us to match any color. So stop wandering and start painting. Head to your neighborhood Ace today. Timberline Ace Hardware, serving the Heber Valley for over 50 years, is conveniently located at 737 South Main Street in the heart of Heber City. Five, four, three, two, one. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. As your locally owned Timberline Ace Hardware, we are committed to being the helpful place by offering our customers personal service, quality products, and a convenient shopping experience from local experts who know you best. That's Timberline Ace Hardware. Wasatch, I don't think it's appropriate to say gets the monkey off the back. Let's say they get the orangutan off their back <laughs> and gets the 1-0 victory, their first region victory of the season. It was a nine-game losing streak, and Bridger Shaw throws an absolute gem, and Wasatch gets the 1-0 victory. Ty, throw it over to you for the Gordon Law Group game recap. Ty, this is a beautiful baseball game, a 1-0 victory for Wasatch. Both teams had five hits on the day, 
and Wasatch was just able to get the hit when it counted with the runner in scoring position. Bridgershaw twice worked out, a ba out of a bases loaded jam. Tyler both times had two outs and was able to get a ground out to his infield. One to shortstop Carter Picard, one to Braxton Fowler at third base, Tyler. And that's really the difference in the game. Let me take you inning by inning here and uh, let you know how this one got broke down. Both teams went scoreless in the first and second inning. And into the third, Wasatch was able to get a little something going as Zach Burdett was able to get a single for Wasatch and eventually move his way over to second base. And then Colton Bassett, who was in as our Gravity Coalition sub of the game, had the only RBI on the day as he singled to left field. Coach Jacobson took a chance to send uh, uh, Burdett on the sharply hit ball, and Burdett was able to get his way in, Tyler. Just one of those moments where everything fell your way as you have the speed you needed on second base to take a chance on a sharply hit ball. And Bassett, even though he came in only hitting 153, delivered in that clutch moment as he was hitting in Crew Baxter's spot. And that's the difference in the game. From that point on, both teams went scoreless in the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh inning. Both had chances, but couldn't push anything across, Tyler. And Wasatch gets the 1-0 victory win. Let me hit you with just a few standout stats if I can, Tyler. Already pointed out, Wasatch had five hits on the day. No player had multiple hits. Blake Sweat had one. Zach Burdett had a hit. Bassett. Mahoney and Fowler each with a hit on the day today and again Bassett the lone RBI and Burdett your one run scored on the flip side really the Bank of Utah player of the game Tyler has to go to Bridger Shaw who got the start on the mound went 70 innings pitched through 96 pitches 65 of which were strikes Tyler and in the last inning he was struggling a little bit more that number actually was significantly, significantly higher on the strike percentage for the majority of that game. Bridger gives up five hits in total, had five strikeouts and only one walk on the game, no hit by pitches. And again, he was able to strand two bases loaded situations for the Spanish Fork Dons. And Bridger Shaw carried the Wasps to victory there today. The Gordon Law Group's your full service local law firm practicing in all areas of the law. They take pride in saying, yeah, we do that. I want, want to just say real quick, Ty, why baseball is just a beautiful game. I mean, you, you have a team that hasn't won a game in nine games, and Burdett, who wasn't even in the lineup yesterday, gets a single in his first at bat, ends up scoring, and who's he scored by? Bassett, who has very limited at bats this year, only hitting 153, as you said, and then Bridger Shaw, who came in with a 7.0 ERA, giving up a run an inning, comes out and throws a shutout game. Just a great game where every day brings um, a new experience. Let's throw it over to Utah and hand out some awards, and let's start with our Bank of Utah standout performer of yeah, the game. Yeah, it's, it's Bridger Shaw. Tyler already kind of indicated his... Uh, his performance here today, but he's going to get the win on the mound. Tyler, five strikeouts, five hits, no earned runs, no runs in general, and uh, he gets the seven-inning complete game victory for Wasatch here today. Bank of Utah has accounts for everyone. Stop on into their friendly Heber branch at 620 West, 100 South, and together we'll build relationships that last. Bank of Utah is an equal housing lender. Member FDIC, and lastly, a good spa day is your favorite hometown place to relax and unwind. They offer massage, skin care, nail care, and unique relaxing spa packages. Pick a good spa day to be your spa, your play of the game. On a 1-1 count in the bottom of the seventh inning with the bases loaded and Wasatch leading 1-0, Bridger Shaw was able to get the ground ball